Secretary Griswold became a lightning rod for the right's vitriol after she joined with Colorado residents in their efforts to keep Trump off the ballot there. And Rolling Stone reported this week that in the seven months since then, the number of serious threats against her have increased more than 600 percent. A lot of those threats are too gruesome and inappropriate to put on TV. But here are a couple, just to give you a sense of what she's facing. In one voicemail, someone said, I can't wait to find you and follow you to your house and expose your address. Another person left a voicemail saying, I'd love for you to die. Someone else told Griswold on social media, take my advice and wear Kevlar, a lot of Kevlar. Joining me now is Colorado Secretary of State Jenna Griswold. Secretary of State Jenna Griswold, it is always a pleasure to have you. But in this instance, I am sorry that we have to have this conversation. First of all, I have to ask, how are you and your family doing? Do you feel like your safety is paramount and the most important thing to have to maintain right now? Good morning or good afternoon, Katie, uh, depending on the time zone and happy Easter. And it is unfortunate to have this conversation, but I, I think it's necessary because the, the bigger picture is that anybody who stands up to Donald Trump or the MAGA right is barraged with threats. Uh, and a lot of us standing up just happen to be women. So those threats are not only violent, but sexist in nature. Uh, and make no mistake, this is part of the strategy. The MAGA strategy is to spread as much disinformation as possible to pass those voter suppression laws, undermine faith in our elections, and try to scare election workers out of their positions. And we have seen the threats to election workers be somewhat successful. Here in Colorado alone, we had a 38% turnover of elected county clerks since 2020, in part because of the vitriol. Uh, so we cannot allow this strategy to go unchecked and unnoticed. And that's why I do think it's important to have these conversations. Secretary, your team has tallied nearly 800 serious threats against you. That Rolling Stone article we just talked about notes that only two men who have threatened you have actually been prosecuted. What do you make about that particular statistic and, and the chilling effect it has on election workers? To be very clear, the two men who were prosecuted um, were not part of this current uh, threat barrage. I started to receive threats in 2021 after the insurrection, and they go up and down. Of course, with the Supreme Court case when it was filed in September, we saw a huge uptick. Uh, but the, the, the bigger picture is that many of these threats are not taken seriously. Secretaries of state and election workers are told repeatedly that when people say they're going to hang us, kill us, kill our families, that the threats aren't real. Uh, we consistently have to fight for sufficient security. And you just have to look at the rate that the DOJ's special task force on election uh, threats to election officials. They have only prosecuted 20 cases since 2021. Uh, so there, there is a, a definite feeling among secretaries of state and election officials that this is not a serious matter for many. And I would just like to clearly state to federal and state officials and to the DOJ that it is time to wake up. Again, no one should have to live in this type of atmosphere. Election workers, when they're threatened, they're just largely volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is ridiculous that we are not seeing more prosecutions in this country and more invested in the security of election officials and secretaries of state. You, re you recently announced that you kind of you created a grant program to be able to increase security. That's one of several measures that can be taken. What do you say to other secretaries of state that are also being threatened, other election workers that are being threatened? You know, as you said, a lot of them are doing this on a volunteer basis, but they believe in democracy and the preservation and the protection of it. What do you tell them to make sure that they keep on going and that they're not cowed in any way or to, to be terrified or intimidated to stay away from continuing to be an active participant in democracy? Well, I, I have to tell you, first off, it is scary when someone yeah. is repeatedly telling you um, how they're going to, to kill you. You have to take it really seriously. 
But with that said, we cannot be intimidated. I will not be intimidated and have never changed the course of decision making uh, out of, of fear. And what I would say to uh, state government officials is you need to increase your laws as quickly as possible for the threat environment. Here in Colorado, I led efforts to make it a crime to threaten or retaliate against election workers. Uh, we've made it a crime to dox election workers, a crime to open carry close to the ballot boxes. Um, but at the same time, again, we really need folks to lean in and prosecute when it's possible and to believe us when we are saying the threat environment is strong. And, and to tell you, Katie, the majority of election workers are women. The majority of secretaries of state who have received uh, this high threat content are women. Uh, and I do think it, it's a big problem because you intersect gender with believing officials who are telling you they're being threatened. But the, the last thing I would say to those secretaries of state and election officials is that they have not stepped down. People who have decided they just can't move forward, have been replaced, of course, with other election officials. And at the end of the day, I think it's so important to recognize um, a, a famous quote, uh, but a truism. Courage doesn't mean that you don't have fear. Courage is continuing forward regardless of the fear. And that's what we have to do as a nation. True words never been spoken. And I appreciate your willingness, Secretary of State Jenna Griswold, to take the time to have the transparency about the fact that there is fear, but that there is also still courage in this process. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.